all right guys here we are at retroarch.com the link to this page is in the description below once you're here go ahead and click on download as the recording of this video the latest version is 1.13.0 we have the option to download the nightly build or the stable build i'm going to download the stable build now let's go ahead and start our setup welcome to retroarch next accept the license agreement i agree go ahead and choose wherever you would like to install retroarch on your pc i'm going to leave it on my c drive but if you would like to change that go ahead and select browse and you can install it somewhere on your ssd external hard drive wherever you like next if you need to install DirectX or you're not sure if you already have it on your pc go ahead and check direct x next if you would like to create any shortcuts, go ahead and do that here. If not, check, do not create shortcuts. Install. Once it's finished, you're gonna get a direct X install. Go ahead and click, I accept the agreement. Next, and make sure to uncheck, install the Bing bar. You do not wanna install that. Next. Complete, finish, and finish. Now let's close back out. Once you are done with the setup, you're going to get this folder right here. I have moved it to my desktop. You may have this folder installed somewhere else on your PC. You just have to find it depending on where you chose to install RetroArch on your PC. Let's open the folder and you want to scroll down until you find the little RetroArch icon. There it is right here. This is the emulator. Let's open it. Now, if you notice, when we first opened RetroArch, we're greeted with this ugly gray user interface. So I'm going to show you guys how to change this to something that looks a lot better and easier to use. So what you want to do is you want to go to settings, drivers, then you want to scroll down to menu. And we want to change this from Ozone to XMB. Once you do this, you want to exit out of RetroArch. And let's just go back into it. And there we are. This looks a lot better. It's easier to use and a whole lot prettier. Now, if you have a wire controller connected to your PC or a Bluetooth controller, such as an Xbox One or a PS4 controller, at this point, you can now use that controller to control RetroArch with no setup required. Now, not all wire controllers will work, but most will. And also, if you would like to go full screen at this point, all you want to do is hit the F key on your keyboard and you will go full screen. Now let's find ourselves a nice Nintendo emulator. So let's go to load core. Let's go to download a core. Double click it. It's fetching for the core list. Now you wanna scroll all the way down till you get to Nintendo. And there's going to be quite a few Nintendo emulators in here. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? All right, here we are. And we're going to download Nintendo NES Famicom Nestopia. Double click it. And it's going to start downloading that core. All right, the core is installed. Now let's go back. Now let's load our NES games into RetroArch. So what you want to do is you want to go down to show desktop menu. It's going to kick us out of full screen. And you want to come over to this box and you want to right click and go to new playlist. And you can name this Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System, or in my case, just NES. And then you want to select that folder. Then you want to come over here, right click, add folder. And you want to select wherever your games are installed. In my case, mine are installed on my external hard drive. Select the folder. And now you want to add the core, which will be the Nestopia. The database will be Nintendo Entertainment System and then okay. And as you can see, it located all of my games that are stored on my external hard drive. Now we can exit out 
and you want to exit out a retro arch and now we're going to reopen it now if you click left or hit left on your controller you will be taken to where your nes games are now we're going to make this look a lot better i'm going to show you guys how to add box art to your titles so what you want to do is right click or right on your controller and now you want to scroll down to online updater then you want to go to playlist thumbnails updater and select nes or whatever you called your folder where you installed your games now this is going to take a while because it has to upload all the box art for your games once the download is finished you want to exit out now let's reopen retroarch once again let's click to the left now when we scroll down this time as you can see we have box art now some titles may be missing box art it's probably because at the end of the description you have some extra words or something crazy that just needs to be deleted so i'm also going to show you how to fix your missing box art so what you want to do is open your retro arch folder go down to thumbnails nintendo entertainment system named box art and this is where all of your box art is stored and all you want to do is find the title that's missing the box art and rename it now i'm going to load up a game and that's going to be teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 the arcade game and i am using my xbox one controller it is working and i didn't have to set it up Now let me pause this. Now if you guys want to get to the end game menu, you want to hit the F1 key. Here you can restart your game, take screenshots, save your game, load your game, change your controller layout if you're not happy with it, and so on. Also make sure to check out my retro art setup video for Android that's showing on the screen now in the bottom left. All you have to do is click it. I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. Peace.